if they want to. Talk don't bother me. And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo, and welcome to my guest, Jeff Adler. Hi. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Now, Jeff is a musician from an ensemble of musicians called the Hevra Ensemble, and they have a record called Between Worlds, and we're going to hear from this record, and we're going to also hear Jeff's music, which he brought uh, these instruments, I guess they're flutes, and Absolutely. we're going to describe them and show them to you, and we'll play them later on, so I'm looking forward to that. So welcome again, and uh, we're going to have some fun for the next 28 minutes, so uh, this is Let Them Talk. So, Jeff, Between Worlds, the Hevra Ensemble, what, what is the Hevra Ensemble? Well, the Hever Ensemble is a group formed by one of our members, uh, Judy Dansker, about 10 years ago um, for a special concert up in Great Barrington. And um, we, I had written a couple of pieces for that concert and it went over so well, we said, this is my work. So, um, you know, we've been through a few different keyboard players and we finally found the one that's right for us. And this is our, uh, actually our second album, and it's one that we're very proud of. It's just released. Um, it's, uh, you can find out details on hevraensemble.com. Um, How do you I, spell Hevra? H-E-V-R-E-H, -E -E and then ensemble, one word. What does Hevra mean? In which Hev language? Hevra is actually a Hebrew word meaning welcome. But our music, uh, entails far more than just uh, Jewish music. It's not really Jewish music except the fact that I'm Jewish. Um, but there's a lot of different styles that I like to use. Classical jazz, world music, uh, Native American style, um, some, you know, Jewish sounding styles. There's a lot of, a lot of things involved. Um, Tell okay. us a little bit about the musicians in the group, because here's a picture. I, I don't, you know, I don't have it up, but we maybe uh, can show it to folks here. Here's a, 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 a picture of the ensemble, and uh, tell us a little bit about the different musicians and the instruments that they play. Sure. Um, well, I myself play bass clarinet and many different Native American flutes, including some drone flutes, which I'll play later for okay. you. Um, then, and I also play kalimba, and, which is an African instrument, sure. balafon, another African instrument. Uh, we have Lori Friedman, who plays clarinet. She plays shofar on one of the pieces, and she's actually an outstanding shofar player, and people get What's blown shofar? away. The shofar is a ram's horn, actually. It's okay. an ancient Hebrew instrument that's still used in, on the high holy days uh, in in temples, synagogues around the world. Um, we use it in a secular way uh, in one of the pieces we do, and it's, it's very effective. And Laurie also plays some Native American flutes and percussion. Uh, we have Judy Dansker who plays oboe, English horn, oboe de more, um, and Native American flute and percussion. And Adam Morrison who plays the keyboards, piano keyboards and percussion. Um, and we also, for the album and for some big concerts, we have a uh, percussionist, usually Shane Shanahan, who's a fabulous player, come in, help us out, play some great, uh, great lines for us. Wow. So uh, you're, you'll be playing, or, or you'll be performing soon? Well, we just actually did a concert in Manhattan a few days ago. Oh, um, our, over the summer, we're all kind of going our separate ways and traveling different directions this year. Uh, but we'll be back together at the end of August uh, in a, for a concert in the Argazi uh, Gallery, which is in Lakeville, Connecticut. Uh, we've played there before. It's actually, we've gotten a great full houses all the time. They're very gracious. And we're going to use uh, Joseph Firecrow, who's a guest artist on the CD, and he's going to be uh, a guest artist on the concert. Now, Joe is... Um, to my ears, one of the finest Native American flutists in the world, if not the finest Native American flutist in the world. And it was, it was great that he agreed to play on the CD with us, and he just, like, his playing just blows me away. I love it. Well, you know, why don't we play a cut from the record right now? Absolutely. And then folks can, uh, can hear for themselves. And then we'll talk some more and then play some live music in sure. a few minutes. 
All right, great. So I'm going to do that from here. But in the meantime, tell me how you got into playing uh, the uh, this kind of music and how you found out mm, about the Native American flutes. Native American flutes, yeah. Well, um, it's a funny story. I was in, of all places, I was in an indoor winter powwow in Brooklyn, in the Armory in Brooklyn, and just walking around, and a a guy. Uh, there was a lot of different booths there and a guy was playing his music, and it was Native American flute. And I listened, you know, and I've been a professional musician for many years, and I listened, and for some reason, it really struck me as something special, something that I needed to do. And over the years, I just have written a lot of music for it, and I play it a lot, and it's just like, it's really one of my loves. What, which Native tradition? Which, uh, which well, tradition? My, uh, my flutes are all from the Cherokee Nation, um, because I like the way that they sound and the way they blow. Um, more, the Western style flutes are a little easier to blow and a little brighter. But being a woodwind player, I like to have that resistance and that big dark sound. So, so the different native nations in America play different flutes. Absolutely, absolutely. Different styles, different. And now, of course, over the last few years, uh, like everything in the world has become more homogenized, let's say, because everybody hears each other and everybody's getting flutes from each other. So it's less of a different style. So the Cherokee style is less different than the Lakota or the Cheyenne style. Um, but there, there definitely still is a difference. Great. So let's play a, a, a clip from your, uh, a cut from Between Worlds from your Absolutely, your yes. I'll play that right this now. is one called Praha. Okay, great. And we've been listening to uh, this uh, wonderful performance, Between Worlds, the Hevra Ensemble. That was... Uh, Praha. Praha, right? There it is, Praha. Great. And here's the, here's the record here. So, um, all right, that, that's interesting. The record's out. Uh, but show us the instrument. Those flutes are amazing. They're so haunting. Right. The well, we love the sound of them. This, actually, the flute you just heard was this flute. This is actually a very unique flute uh, wow. made by uh, Danny Begay. Okay. who is uh, actually uh, born as a Choctaw member, but I think he's been adopted by the Cherokee uh, tribe, and he makes flutes in the Cherokee style. Uh, he lives in the mountains in Tennessee, and uh, the name of his flute is the Mountain Spirit Flute. And so if anybody's interested, look him up. Sure. Um, anyway, but uh, I had a say in the design of this flute, not the way it looks. This is a fabulous looking flute. It's just beautiful. Um, and the workmanship is unbelievable. What but kind of wood is it made out this of? This is the eastern cedar, which wow. is a very, easy, a very loud, rich sound. Right. Um, and what are the parts of the flute here? How do okay. they correspond to? Uh, well, this is a double drone, and the, what makes this different than almost any double drone is the fact that uh, one of the pitches is lower than the main body. Mm -hmm. So basically, if, when I play this, I'll get three pitches at once. It's like a one-man band almost. <laughs> right, wow. Uh, so we have two drones. We have the low E drone. And then we have a choice, actually. This drone could either be a C or an A. I have it set up as a C. 
and then the middle is where I can change the notes. Or wow, that's amazing. <laughs> it's a great flute. Wow, and what is the? How does this work here? What is this? Is okay, well, the way a Native Amer Native American flutes are indigenous to this hemisphere. They are ancient instruments, at least ten thousand years old, and maybe older. Wow. Um, how do they know that? Well, th through finding records and stuff and finding actual flutes. Wow. Flutes originally were made from hollowed out bones and, you know, bird bones or deer bones. Mm -hmm. um, and it was not till later on that they became wood. But the fact that there were bones meant they stuck around and so archaeologists could find these, mm -hmm. these instruments. So they're very ancient. The main difference, uh, there is a, a, a lot of differences between this and the European recorder mm -hmm. in that the sound travels through here, comes uh -huh. out under this, which we call the bird, okay. and then there's wow. fipples over here. So the reason you, it's, the reason you get so much of more mellow, darker sound is because the air has to travel in a different way. Rather than in a European instrument, the fipple's right on top, so you, it, it's immediate, an immediate hit. Right, right. So, so this, the air has to actually travel through the inside. Right. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And uh, so is this based on an ancient flute design or? Well, you know, drone flutes did exist. Why um, is it called a drone flute? Okay, because, ones? yeah, well, we have, this is an example of a single drone flute, which only has one extra. Uh-huh, I see. Both these flutes are featured on the CD, by the way. Yeah, we could hear. I could hear them now. I could, yeah, okay. I yeah. Um, but draw, I mean, a drone is just basically a pitch that stays the same, mm -hmm. while the other pitches around it are moving. Right. So I this see. and are always the same, I while see. the other things are ch are changing. So okay. in some ways, it limits you. I mean, you have to know what you're doing. It limits you harmonically. But I get around that in certain pieces by eliminating some drones. So well, I can just eliminate one of the drones and I, I can see. get harmonically, I can follow my ideas. Okay. Um, but it's a very cool sound altogether. Yeah, like absolutely. The so. Would you like to try perform sure, a, p sure. a piece for us? Great. I'm, I'm, I'm going to play a piece that's, that's uh, brand new, actually. Um, I call it Viking Mountain because that's where this flute was born. Jeff Adler. All right, that was amazing on the Native American flute. And it's just so exciting to hear that. Uh, Jeff Adler's part of the Hevra Ensemble, and this is the record Between Worlds, and uh, available in all the usual places. And there's Jeff. And um, here's the ensemble inside, right here. And um, Maybe uh, for folks who just tuned in, tell us a little bit about the Havra Ensemble and your record between the worlds. How did this? Uh, tell us. Tell me. Tell us a little bit, maybe about uh, about the, uh, the the collaboration process. And I know you collaborated with uh, Jim Firecrow and other Joseph Firecrow. Joseph yeah. Firecrow. Well, you know, um, 
We actually, I mean, I write all the music for the group, and we had a, uh, a certain amount of pieces that we felt would really work for the uh, CD. And in the, actually, while we were recording, at the end of one very long session, our uh, producer engineer, Daryl Bornstein, who does a fabulous job on this record, mm -hmm. um, came up to me. He's also a producer for Joseph Firecrow. Mm -hmm. He said, listen, you know, uh, how would you like to, because uh, I guess you liked what we were doing, how would you like to, do you have anything that maybe uh, Joe can play with you? Mm -hmm. I said, I don't right now, but give me a, give me a couple days. <laughs> and so I wrote a piece, um, right. and I was really pleased with the way it sounds, especially his playing. Mm -hmm. He's really virtuoso native flute yeah. playing. And so, what's his background? What's his? Uh, well, he's a northern northern uh, Cheyenne uh, okay. guy from Montana, Wisconsin. One of those. And, and how the flutes there are much different. They're made of different yes. materials. and or? yeah, I mean, if you listen to the album, uh, you you could hear the difference in his tone quality than from my tone quality, let's mm -hmm. say. Or the tone quality, you know, Laurie, there are a couple of pieces where we have three flutes. In fact, one of the pieces we have is for that double drone plus two regular native mm -hmm. flutes wow. and plus percussion. Um, so that's, that's a very cool piece called Good Omens. Um, and, but, but Joe has a very, you know, it's a very different style of mm -hmm. playing. And it's a terrific style of playing, and, and I really highly re recommend, if you don't want to, if you're, if you're not turned on by this CD, uh -huh. go look him up, because he's great. Well, these drone flutes, will they, uh, are they appearing in, in concert productions, in like, you know, yeah, well, philharmonic uh, style? Uh, well, not so much. I'm sure there are, thing, uh, are, are venues where they, they're used. Um, the pieces that I know of that were written for Native American flute and orchestra are uh, just for single mm -hmm. uh, tone flutes. Okay. Um, and, you know, drone flutes have been around a while. I like to think I use them in a slightly different way. Mm -hmm. uh, but my flute style is, is, is quite different than ordinary. Well, it seems to have a real traditional sound to it. I mean, when I, I, I just heard the Native, it seemed to, my interpretation of Native culture, I just heard through the oh, okay. sound of that. Great. You know, and the drone of it and everything, what you call the drone to right, me is that, right. that mysterious sound. Well, it is, yeah. I mean, it's a very, um, it's a, almost a spiritual sound, actually. Mm -hmm, it's it's yeah. a very, if not spiritual, at least relaxing. Yeah, um, for sure. And in fact, that's one of the comments we get. Um, even, you know, we've played in, in Eastern Europe and all around this things is when people come up to you. In fact, we've had people come up to us unvisited mm -hmm. emotions that uh, dealt with her grandfather, actually, uh -huh. that seemed to, to have come to a head and, and was, was healed by some of this music, sure. uh, which is like, I mean, that's incredible uh -huh. stuff to hear. I mean, it's not when you write music, you're not doing it. Well, you know, you're doing it for a lot of reasons, I guess. Right. But I never expected that kind of reaction, but I'm certainly glad to get it's it. It's interesting because uh, a, a while back, I had a musician who was playing a Japanese harp okay. from West Africa, which is, it's a one-string violin, basically, and mm -hmm. has all these amazing sounds. And the wood is very ancient, and how you do it is very, you know, been done for hundreds of years. And and uh, he said some of the same things. Okay. <laughs> and had people saying like they were they were almost cured of emotional uh, problems by listening to this music. Right. And by right. The, the something about well, you know, it. And yeah, and and it's actually there's there's something that the culture sometimes is missing when they're not listening to enough mm -hmm. music, or at least a, enough music, healing kind of music or relaxing kind of music, not music to make you more hyper than you already are, uh -huh. and which it's, well, especially young people seem to be right. into, into that kind of music that's, that makes them more excited than they need to be, I think. <laughs> uh, there's something to be said about this kind of music, too. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, so tell us, is, is, are, are these flutes, are they, are they in danger? Are they, is this culture, is this style of music in the native world? I mean, we hear so much about languages and different other cultural things disappearing and not being uh, preserved, but uh, this, this, that doesn't well, seem to be happening here. I think um, there was a real upswing of interest in Native American flutes and Native American culture in general uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and, you know, people like Danny Begay or uh, uh, my, my dear late, uh, late and great flute maker, Hawk Littlejohn, 
who uh, died like 12 years ago already. Uh, he was like one of the one of the great flute makers, and I have many of his flutes. Um, they really uh, prospered uh, to to a certain degree when things were very popular. They're not all that popular anymore. I don't know if it was a fad or sure. if people moved on to other things. So it's a little tougher for Native American artists in general, and especially and flute makers in particular, uh, to make a living nowadays. Unfortunately, um, but. Uh, you know, it, it, they're there, they're out there, and and. Well, I remember when recorders were big. I don't remember when we were kids. All of a right. sudden, everybody was playing the recorder. Everybody wanted to be a recorder That's right. player. That's right. Then they disappeared again. I yeah. must have had five of them back then. You know. Yeah, and, you uh, know, I guess but, we go through these phases. Yeah, right. So. I, like in everything, I think it's guitar, everything like that. It just yeah. comes and goes. Well, I I plan on on using native flutes. Uh, for as long as I'm writing and as long as I'm performing. Well, so. they're just amazing. They're so beautiful, again, yeah, to, to really see them are, and, yeah. and the wood and how they're made. And, and I'm sure hundreds of years from now, somebody will be studying these and saying, yeah, because they look like they have that kind of staying power. Yeah, you know? yeah. Wow. Uh, do you want to play another little clip or play another? Uh, well, I could play. Uh, we could. If yeah, I sure. Could I could play a little bit more. We, yeah, we have some time. Minutes. I'll play. Um, Thank this you. is This is. Um, actually a G, a G flute with a B-flat drone. And it's going to be part of a, uh, the middle of a song called New Edens. Uh, it's on the CD, and it's accompanied by lots of other things. But I think it's pretty, uh, this melody is pretty enough to stand on its own. So. <laughs> It's a drone G. Uh, the drone I'm using is a black drone. I have a choice of a G or a B flat. Made by Danny Begay. Uh, actually, all, all my flutes that I use now are made by Danny How Begay. How long does it take to, to make a flute? Well, um, it, it made two weeks for a, for a drone. Or, and for the double drone, it might have taken three or four weeks. Um, so we actually witnessed a lot of it. And he has his, it's almost like a Stradivarius kind of thing. His own special kind of varnish that he doesn't want anybody else to know about. And it's very effective. It's be I, I, I love his work. Uh huh. And so this is the record between worlds. And uh, beautiful music. And of course, here's the ensemble. The Hev Hevra ensemble. And we're talking to Jeff Adler, who's been playing, who's been gracious enough to play the Indian flute with us. It's just been beautiful. Uh, last few minutes. When? Uh, how can people find out more about? Okay, the well, Havra you know, Ensemble. they can always check out our website, Um 
The CD will be uh, commercially available in about a week, I think, at CD Baby uh, and on iTunes and on Amazon MP3 and in about two or three weeks on regular Amazon. So it'll be uh, available just about anywhere you, you, that, that you'd like. Um, and, but you always check our website, see where we're playing. We do a lot of uh, concerts actually outside of New York. Um, and we have quite a following up in New England, and and uh, you know we have plans on. Do you do the uh, the powwows scene? No, no, because you know we're 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 not Native American, and actually, right. uh, if you ask uh, uh, someone who really knows Native American music, they'd say no, this is not Native American music, and I and I agree, it's my music, and but I like to use their instruments, uh, and I like to use these instruments as well as our you know bass clarinet, clarinet, oboe, keyboards. I mean, I use I use it all. It's interesting. Is that a controversy? Uh, it hasn't been. It hasn't been. But in general, I mean, if somebody was was upset with me using Native American flutes, I would say, well, you know, I use, cl I play clarinet, and that wasn't. That's not an American instrument. So why is that? Why is why am I not allowed to play clarinet? Or if somebody is playing drums, that's African. Why are they not allowed to play drums? I'm playing these instruments because I love their instruments. I'm not trying to say that I. Uh, I'm a Native American or I'm playing in their style. I'm not saying that at all. I'm playing in my style. I appreciate their style greatly and I love the instruments and, and that's basically right. my answer to, to any controversy. Right, and, and it seems like you're providing a, uh, a venue for Native American musicians to... I hope so. And, and, and makers. And, yeah, uh, I hope so. Right, yeah. great. It is yeah. great. I think that's great, keeping it alive. It's important that we all work yeah. together on that. Uh, so any last words? Half a minute. Well, um, I uh, just um, check us out. Check out our music, um, I, and I'd love you know you check out the website. You'll it'll talk about future concerts. We're you know we're thinking about an actual official CD release party somewhere in Manhattan in the fall, but no details have been oh. been established. Great, so we'll go invite us. Make sure you invite us. Absolutely, we absolutely. There. All right, great. All right. All right. Thank you, Jeff Adler, for joining us, and we'll see you next week here on Let Them Talk. Take care.